Hawks has made pawns of opposing ball carriers. Today, they match up against a King Longhorn, who they hope to keep in check. The entire state is painted purple. They come early to party. They hope to party afterwards late. And they come by every form of transportation. The main event in Manhattan, Kansas, is their fourth-ranked football team. And our matchup, the fourth-ranked Wildcats of Kansas State home to the Longhorns of Texas. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, and we welcome you to Manhattan, where today Kansas State has not played anybody, quite frankly, at this point. They're 2-0 on the season, two lopsided wins. They meet a Texas team still reeling a bit from their loss last week to UCLA. And Gary Danielson, also Texas has to come in. Richard Walton got hurt last week. They come in with a big question mark at quarterback. His name is Major Applewhite. He's only played 18 plays, and he's coming to this game as the question mark. But Brady can do that question mark into a positive by making the easy plays, catching the snap from the center, handing the ball off, and he's got an exclamation point to hand that ball off to in Ricky Williams for Texas to win. Ricky Williams has to carry the ball at least 30 times in this game. Problem for Ricky Williams, there's a Kansas State defense that will punctuate you over on the other <laughs> they side. They've got some punctuation marks, <laughs> don't they? They've got the best linebacking crew in the college. Simino, Oaks, and Kelly. This defense will disrupt you, they'll clean up the mess, and then they'll mop up whatever is left. This is one of the outstanding defenses in college football. Should be a great matchup. We've got it coming up. Kansas State and Texas next. Welcome to our college football studios in New York. I'm John Saunders. Out to your game in just a moment, but first an update of some scores. NC State coming off that win against Florida State. Trailed this one 26 to nothing. They're fighting back. Rutgers, no match for Syracuse, 70 to 14. Donovan McNabb with another outstanding day. And Eastern Michigan hands Michigan their first win, 59 to 20. We'll see you at halftime right now. Out to your game. Sold out KSU Stadium in Wagner Field in Manhattan, Kansas. Texas won the toss and deferred, so Kansas State will get their hands on it first. The Longhorns off to a one and one start, and right now are giving up 533 and a half yards a game. Kansas State, on the other hand, a two and zero start. They've scored more points than anybody in the country, and they have won nine games in each of the last five seasons. And that's a very elite list that they join. Mac Brown, his first year as head man at Texas. After successful years in Chapel Hill with North Carolina, Bill Snyder in his 10th season has probably done the biggest reclamation job in the history of college football in this city. Uh, you could drop the probably. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Dockton's got it teed up for the Longhorns. Back deep, David Allen, Gerald Neesman awaits, and we're underway from Manhattan. And Neesman, six yards deep, will not bring it out. So Kansas State's offense will work for the first time today from its own 20-yard line. As we take a look at the Chili starting lineup, first for Kansas State, the biggins up front, Ryan Young, a potential first-round draft choice at tackle with Martin Cummins, Hanley, and Stevenson. In the receiver core, they haven't had to throw much. Darnell McDonald has seven catches to lead the club. Burnett, the other wide out, and Swift's a good tight end. And in the backfield, Eric Hickson closing in on the all-time school record for rushing. Goolsby is his lead man, and Michael Bishop right there is the man at the controls, and he is very, very entertaining to watch. First down, 
Kansas State. On the eye. And it's Hickson who's hit immediately. Casey Hampton and company close the door along with Dusty Renfro as we take a look at the Longhorn defense. Hampton was in on that tackle. Humphrey Woodard and Kelly round out the front four. A great job last week by DeAndre Lewis who had 14 tackles in the game we saw against UCLA. Renfro and Babineau, the other two backers. A very inexperienced secondary. McGowan's one of three back there. And Holmes, Jammer, and Walker, they are still concerned about that group, Gary. Yep. And they've continued to shuffle them around trying to fight the right, uh, find the right combination. Yeah. Uh, Tony Holmes is back at corner after starting the season at corner, moving to strong safety last week, and now back to corner. So some early frustration for Kansas State. They lose a yard, and then they're confused with their offensive alignment. They'll take a timeout. We're just underway. We'll be right back. At America's top university, the most gifted mind belongs to the guy who cleans the floors. Winner of two Academy Awards, including Best Original Screenplay and Best Supporting Actor Robin Williams. You are bound by nothing. Goodwill Hunting, now on pay-per-view, rated R. in Manhattan, strong. Kansas. And I'll tell you how strong. It looks like a two-club. Oh, I'm sorry. We're still in the summer. There just is a heavy wind. So so windy that uh, we lost a couple post-it notes already yep, up here. we got to have something more than post-it notes. And it's going to be right to left on your screen. So Kansas State going right into it. Michael Won't affect Bishop. that guy, will it? Not really. He's got some pretty good zip on the football. Second down and a long 10. And Bishop with the audible at the line. Goolsby's a single setback. In a two tight end formation. He'll take off on his own. He does a lot of this, and he's very successful at it. Bishop puts a shoulder down, took a big hit at the 26-yard line. Nice hit by Joe Walker. They put a few of those on Michael Bishop. He won't forget them until next week sometime. It'll bring up third down and a long four. Well, Michael Bishop is similar to what Texas saw a week ago in Cade McNown. Michael's probably a couple steps faster, throws the ball a little harder. I don't know if he is quite the the finisher that uh, Cade is in, within the offense, but I think Michael Bishop will do more things outside of the offense by design, like that play right there. Back to two wide out set. High backfield play action. He's going to take off again on a quarterback draw. He got the first down marker, yes. Out to the 37-yard line. The 11-yard pickup, first down, Kansas State. Michael Bishop is gyrating and talking right into the bench of Texas. Of course, he came out of Texas. Big Texas fan coming out of high school and junior college. A play-action quarterback draw. You don't see a lot of that. Dusty Renfro, the middle linebacker, came across. But as he got up, he gave a mouthful and an earful to Texas. Well, that's a tremendous amount of respect you have for your quarterback's running ability when it's a play fake and a quarterback right. draw all and together. I have not seen a lot of that. Nope. A design for a special athlete. That's what... Snyder has done here. You saw the career numbers rushing for Bishop. Now his first throw is complete. It's a first down. Darnell McDonald out of bounds to pick up the 14. So Kansas State's high-powered offense in gear here in the opening moments. Well, you can see what Kansas State does. Establish Bishop inside 
and then pick on the weakness of the uh, defense for Texas, the corner play. There's, you know, the films have been passed around. This pass defense for Texas has weak corners, and you will see a lot of anticipation of throwing the ball at those guys in this game by Michael Bishop. Now it's a three wide out group, and for all practical purposes, an empty backfield. Bishop the quick slam. He hit Darnell McDonald right between the eight and the zero, but he dropped it. Looks like Aaron Humphrey might have been off sides on the play, though. Flag down, and there it is down on the bottom of your screen. Humphrey, who was so aggressive last week against Cade McNaught and had an excellent game with the penalty. Give me an idea of how effective Humphrey was. Uh, not counting his hurries in the game when he did a great job of rushing Cade McNown and flashing him out of the pocket, but he also had six tackles in that game. The rest of the defensive line combined only had five. five yeah. <laughs> not a good sign. Good no. game for Aaron, bad sign for the rest of that group. It is first and five right here after the penalty. Swift the tight end in the stand-up position, a la the Hawkeyes of Iowa from where Bill Snyder came as offensive coordinator. Here's Hickson, and he's got a first down. And touchdown. Forty-four yards in a hurry. Watch the trapping tackle right here. Milford Stevenson, one of the supposed weaknesses on this offensive line, pulls around, gets in front of the play, and then finally fits on someone. That's what they're telling those tackles. Keep running, keep running until you find someone. Hopefully it'll be a defensive back. That's a good sign. Well, the Kansas State team that's been scoring at more than a point a minute in their first two games. And here at the 12-43 mark, they've got their first six. Martin Gramatica to try to make it seven and does. 80-yard march for the Wildcats. Capped by Hickson from 44 yards out. It's seven other. Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. By Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you fresh beer tastes better. By Sears, come see the many sides of Sears. And by Chili's, a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson back with you in Manhattan, Kansas, where the Jayhawks, the Jayhawks, boy, I get shot saying that here, where the Wildcats. Have already scored seven on yeah. an 80-yard drive. He's the other guy. But not the uh, point out if there is anything on you. Seven nothing. Dramatic hit a kick. High and short kick. They recovered one of these last week when it wasn't fielded by the opposition. This one is one of the up men of Texas takes it and got it out near the 25-yard line. DeAndre Lewis fielded that kick. Check out Quentin Jammer, number six right here. He's the guy who ends up getting blocked on this play. He does not react quick enough. Come on up, come on up, come on up. By the time he gets up there, it's too late. He overruns the play and turns a nice 10-yarder into a touchdown. Those safeties are so important to read the blocking scheme, come up there and play. Gary said, here's a quarterback who will be taking his 18th snap ever. That's inexperience. At a spot you don't want inexperience. Richard Walton out with a broken bone in his throwing hand that we saw a week ago against UCLA. So here's Major Applewhite and the Longhorns from the 25. Ricky Williams in motion from the backfield. May have been a jump by Kansas State. And he delivers the completion out to the 31-yard line to Derek Lewis, his tight end. Let's check the Chile starting lineup for Texas. Octavius Bishop, a mammoth left tackle, have to try to protect the youngsters' backside, along with Raisler, Gaskamp, Adams, and Humphrey. Kwame Cavill had a career game last week against UCLA with McGarity and Derek Lewis, who just made that last catch. And in the backfield, Major Applewhite, the young fellow who's taken over the controls and has completed his first pass. The two Rickies with him in the backfield, Brown and Williams. You know, Brad, as a young quarterback, a new quarterback, when you get in there, you know the eyes of your football team are on you. Now, let's forget about how tall he is. I don't care if he's a five foot two. You don't have to dunk the ball when you're a quarterback. You have to throw the ball. And Major Applewhite will try to first 
and get calm himself, then try to win over his team by his calmness, and then lastly, his offensive coordinator, so he gets some good plays. Interesting here. They could have gotten almost as much yardage on the penalty. They took the throw, I think, to give the youngster some confidence that he completed his first pass. And, and he was hot in warm-ups. He made all the easy throws. Second down, a long three. Here's the toss to Ricky Williams, and he's knocked down for a loss, and it's Darren Howard who was offside on the last play who makes the stop as we take a look at the defense of Kansas State, and they're a good group. You just saw Howard make that play. He had 11 sacks a year ago. McIntosh, Rowan, Bobby, uh, Joe Bob Clements round out the front four. Leading tackler, Jeff Kelly. And Oaks and Simino, all three are Butkus finalists. And in the secondary, and it's a good one, always is, it seems. Jared Cooper had a touchdown last week. Carter Chapman and Neesman round out a very good Kansas State Wildcats secondary. Third down and four. That secondary might get some work here. And Applewhite's going to call a timeout. The reason number 11's taking the snaps at quarterback for Texas, if you didn't see our game a week ago, Texas and UCLA, let's take you back. Last week, Richard Walton, the senior, and you see crunched on that throw, and his hand caught the turf under him. He tried one more pass after that, Gary. He tried yeah, to gut it out. He did. He threw one more ball. But you can see he tried to brace himself, fell right on that wrist, and uh, he threw one more wobbler here. There he is right there. He came to the game today. I saw him kind of shadowing Major throughout the whole warm-ups. But uh, I just don't feel that the reason if Texas loses this game is going to be because of their quarterback. I, I really think he will calm down and play a good game. He's been preparing for this type of game his whole life. He went to 25 football <laughs> camps when he was a youngster getting ready, and you don't get recruited at a place like Texas and uh, John Makovic if you're not accomplished at throwing the football, and this guy is accomplished at throwing the football. I was impressed with him last week when I watched him in, in warm-ups before the game, and I think he will not be the wink link in this football team today. Last week he went three for five in mop-up duty after Walton went out with the injury. And now making his first start. It's a dream job you hope doesn't turn into a nightmare, I guess. Getting your chance to start a quarterback. Third down and four after the timeout. And now the officials have to put the ball back at the proper line of scrimmage either kicked or blown by the wind and now we're all set Ricky Williams and Ricky Brown a dual set behind Applewhite crowd deafening already for the defense and we're just in the first quarter here they come after him throws on the run and throws a shot complete for a first down out to Ricky Brown the fullback Playing pretty cool so far. Mike Stoops, the coordinator for this Kansas City, de a Kansas State defense, called the lynch mob, will not sit back and just let things happen. They will continue to bring people. We talked to him yesterday. He said, we will try to go through the gaps. We will try to make plays early in the game, and we just won't sit back. First down, the 37-yard line. Ricky Williams, boy. They got his number. Jeff Kelly made first contact and then got help from a lot of his friends. Ricky's a marked man today. Yeah, you're talking about a big time defense. I mean, th this team has been told no matter what they said publicly, this defense for Kansas State has been told if they hold Ricky to under 100 yards, they will win the game. You know, they're not saying a lot. They didn't say that publicly, but a few guys let it leak out. So there's the target. He's the exclamation point, but he's Detroit. Second down and 10. Applewhite down the middle. That's complete. Out to the 41-yard line. And Kwame Cavill, the big target, makes the catch That's in some traffic. It'll bring up third Kwame down Cavill. and a long six yet to go. 10.35 to go first quarter. 7-0 Kansas State. Bobby Cavill, they're really happy with how he's come along as a receiver. Came to Texas actually as a linebacker, defensive back type of player. They had so many injuries last year at receiver early in the season. They moved into offense, and it's been a good move. Third down and six. Kansas State doesn't give up much on third down conversions to anybody. Here they come after Applewhite. On the run. 
throws behind McGarity. It would have been a first down near midfield. He threw that one in the turf, and Texas will have to kick it away. Apple White had to get out of the pocket again because inside the linebackers came. Kelly and Simino both stunning up the middle. The Texas, the big Texas offensive line could not handle it. And Apple White had to get out of the pocket. Look out for this guy. Already two long punt returns for touchdowns. And needs just five yards to break the all-time punt return yardage record. And you have an opportunity to do it because it's downwind. This ball should travel far enough to outrun the coverage. Oh, man, did Stockton hit this thing all the way to the five. Allen to the 15. Cuts outside. Across the 30, great return. 27-yard punt return by David Allen has set Kansas State's offense up at the 31-yard line when we come back. Take a look at this week's Marriott Moments. Remember back to the Tostino's Fiesta Bowl of a year ago against Syracuse. Kansas State and Nebraska is what we've got here. And this was a pass that Michael Bishop would love to have gotten back. Nebraska the only blemish on the mark of Kansas State last year. They went 11 and 1 and they still got to get by that team this year. And it's in mid-November instead of early in the season. That's coming up, and uh, they've got a countdown to that already, Gary. Don't 56 they? games with 56 days. Today is 55 days, right? Yep. Before they meet Nebraska, and Hickson, pick up of about three. How things have changed here in Manhattan. Used to be at Kansas State, you try to forget that date. Now they got it a red letter day. 56 more days till that day game. Second down, seven. Second down at seven. Bill Snyder already the. Winning his coach in school history. He's coached in more games, 107 and one more, 68 than anybody else that's ever been here. And put this program on the map. Here's Goolsby, the fullback. And Texas does a nice job swarming around him defensively, led by middle linebacker Dusty Renfro and Casey Hampton, big number 64 there on the inside. It's going to bring up a third down. Mac Brown told me that the inside of that defense had done a good job last week as you look at the Big 12 records since 93. And that, anytime you see Kansas State up there with those names, you know something good has happened. Not bad. Third down. And a long four. Three wide receivers. Bishop loads it and goes complete for a first down. Across the 45, Darnell McDonald again. Pick up of eight in front of Tony Holmes, the cornerback. Of course, Darnell McDonald had that big coming out party in the Fiesta Bowl last year. He was tackled by number 31. Against Syracuse. It's also a huge coming out party, I think, for Michael Bishop. Everybody had heard about Michael Bishop, but the improvement he made, as Ron Hudson, the offensive coordinator, told us yesterday, from the last game until the bowl game was huge. First down, just outside their own 45-yard line. Kansas State by a touchdown. 
8.15 left in the first quarter. Bishop, quarterback draw again. Dancing around the middle. Got positive yardage across midfield to the 49. Give him five. He's got some quick feet. Well, you, you could see already that Bill Snyder's game plan emerging. I think he really wants to showcase five, Michael Bishop in this football line. game. I mean, they don't want to talk about the Heisman thing here, and they know they're playing against Ricky Williams, but so far the game plan has been set up for Michael Bishop. I think that's the third quarterback draw of the game in short passes, second medium here. Let's see what they do. They'll give it off to Hickson. Broke one tackle, a second. He might have a first down. Boy, he's bouncing off people today. Broke some tackles on the touchdown run, and there got it near the 44-yard line. This is very similar to the way the Texas defense started out last week against UCLA. Not fitting their tackles, missing plays they should think, overrunning plays, and, and giving up big plays because of that. They settled down in the second half, but uh, you don't want to wait too long when you're playing these quality teams. You just get blown out of the game. And they're going to measure. Michael Bishop says first down. And Tom Ehlers, our referee, agrees. First down, Kansas State. Five yard unit Already with a touchdown lead. Bill comes off as the hardworking, which he is, conservative, <laughs> which he isn't. This offense is probably as wide open as any offense in college football. It's a huge playbook, and they'll be they'll run anything. I mean, you, you never know what angle they're coming from on this defense, uh, this offense. Excuse me. David Allen's checked into the backfield now at the tailback spot after Hickson got that first down. Quick snap, and here's Allen, the great punt returner. He fumbled. Texas says they have it. They do. Quentin Jammer, who had a fumble recovery and an interception last week, has a fumble recovery here. The reason David Allen does not see a lot of snaps with this offense is because of this right here. He's a talented sophomore, but he makes mistakes. He makes mistakes with blocking, and now he turns the ball over. Aaron Humphrey's the guy that got the turnover right there. Quentin Jammer ended up with it, but Aaron Humphrey made the play, but that was not much of a play. That ball should have been held on to it. You wonder if you'll see much more of Allen because Aaron Hickson is the solid sixth-year senior. So first down, Texas after the turnover. Longhorns from their 38-yard line. Ricky Brown, the fullback, in motion. And Ricky Williams, off right tackle, flags down. Right indicate a holding. It's in the middle of the pile. First time that Ricky Williams has gotten a little bit of breathing room, picked up seven. While we look at the flag, let's check in with John Saunders in our New York studio. Right time now for the Burger King update. Ohio State, a little fake out here. Everyone gets fooled, including the cameraman, Michael Wiley, goes 21 yards for the touchdown. The Buckeyes leading it 7 0. Brad. All right, John, same score here. Kansas State on a long touchdown run on their opening drive. And moments ago, they had a pretty good drive going, too, before the fumble. The penalty walked off against Texas now. We'll back it up to the 30 yard line. Talking to Mac yesterday, I said, what'd you tell the guys at halftime after it looked embarrassing like a year ago? He said, whatever you guys did in the first, first half, do it differently in the second half. <laughs> said, I didn't get too fancy with it. They were down 35-3 to to UCLA last week and came back and made it a fairly respectable game. Applewhite play action. Heat from behind, throws high, intended for Cavill. And this is the first time Applewhite's going to have to scrape himself off the turf. Darren Howard. And Joe Bob Clements, the two defensive ends, converge back there. They're known as the Sox. Seminole, Oaks, and Kelly. Three linebackers. One, two, and three right out here. They move around this football field, make people account for them. And they move so well. The slowest, Kelly, number eight, the middle linebacker, is a 4 6 4. <laughs> That'll give you an indication how quick they are. Second down and 18. Oaks is always out here at the side, kind of tilts it to the side. Applewhite, here comes Howard again. They throw that way to Ricky Williams. 
And out to the 36 yard line. Got about six of it back. It's still going to be third down and very long coming up. So far, the matchup that I think Texas felt good about Octavius Bishop, their best lineman, blocking the best lineman for Kansas State, Darren Howard, has not been solid. He's been running around. Howard has the corner and putting pressure on Applewhite. That's, let's watch that because that is a key matchup for this Texas offense. That speed right now is killing Octavius Bishop. From the shotgun, third down and 12. Again, Howard lined up inside this time as a tackle in this nickel rush pack. Four wide outs for Applewhite. Almost dropped the snap. Buys himself a little time, long sideline pass to McGarity, and he had his hands on it, but he's knocked out of bounds by Jeremetrius Butler, and it's incomplete. That was not a bad throw and a near completion. Jeremetrius did exactly what you teach a corner to do. Don't take the first move. Stay with him and keep running. Now, if you get beat, look at your man. When he puts his hands up, turn around. Yeah, he got away with one there, but he actually he got his hand on the ball, and that was enough. To do it, you got to turn around and see the wall. Kansas State's a great kick blocking team, too. Not to mention, Allen on the other end is a return man. No problem here, though. Stockton hits another high one. Allen might have another chance here from the 14. Stumbles a bit on his own. Got almost 10 on the return out near the 24-yard line. Return by number 32, David Allen. Go behind the scenes of a nightly sports show where the real-life stories happen. Don't miss the premiere of Sports Night. It's coming up Tuesday, 9.30, 8.30 Central Time, right after the season premiere of Spin City on ABC. Sports afternoon here. Major Applewhite making his first start as a collegiate quarterback and has not played too badly so far. His team down a touchdown here in the first quarter. And here's his counterpart, Michael Bishop. First down, Kansas State to 24. Hickson weaves inside, got out near the 30. Taken off his feet by DeAndre Lewis, but he got six. Remember a few years back, Brad, when that Dan Conley from he Syracuse was, was one of those first guys that was a six-year six player. Mm -hmm. Now it seems like uh, if you don't last six years, you're not taking advantage of all the scholarship money you can get. You know, seems like they're on every team now. Hickson missed all of 96 with a broken leg and had been granted an extra year of eligibility. He's behind Goolsby. There's Hickson, number 24. Second down and four. Michael Bishop looks to be changing things up at the line. Drops and delivers out to McDonald again. And that one's just easy picking so far today, it seems like, in front of Tony Holmes, the cornerback again. The rap on Michael Bishop is that he's not a high percentage completion thrower. But you know, this offense really isn't built up for him to be a 65% thrower. They throw the ball downfield. But from what I saw of him yesterday and Thursday in practice and what I see of him today, he has markedly improved in that area. He's gone three times to McDonald, and McDonald has caught all three of them, including that one for a first down at the 39. Oh, well, McDonald's going to have a day here. <laughs> I don't know if he's got a farm, but he's got three catches. Hickson. Taken down okay, number Quentin Jammer and Dusty Renfro, but not before he got out near the 45-yard line. Under five minutes in the quarter. 7-0, the Wildcats in front on a 10-game winning streak, their longest winning streak for this program since 1910. Gain of five on the play. Second down five, 44-yard line. Hickson shared time his first couple of years in the backfield with Mike Lawrence, who's the school's all-time rushing leader, and now he's got his sights set on Mike's career rushing mark here off to a good start today second down and four just inside the 45 yard line Bishop pumps once wants to go deep on the sideline of McDonald broken up I think it hit Quentin Jammer in a helmet but he'll take it however he can break it up See, Michael Bishop just made the cardinal sin mistake that you make as a quarterback. When you do the out and up to the outside, when you're looking to his right, the defense is left. Yeah, you might beat the corner, but the free safety at that time, Quentin Jammer, is also looking to his left. The ball wobbles a bit, a little bit underthrown, and Quentin Jammer comes over and makes the play. Guy in the middle of the field right there is able to come. You know, the field's only 53 yards, and back when I played, they had those guys that couldn't really cover that much yardage, but nowadays, those three safeties can eat up those 53 yards from the middle of the field to the out. 
Had that one not quacked its way downfield, it still might have been complete. Bishop now on the run and taken out of bounds at the 47 yard line, a couple yards short of the first down. That was another called play that time. That was a quarterback was draw. 50 yard line, you wonder if Snyder. <laughs> yeah, you wonder if, if it gets into the wind. I don't think they can do that far. I think I just think they're going to punt this ball. See him come out. He's got great feet. No question yet, but the Texas defense is playing that quarterback draw right now. Texas better get out there on their punt return team. There's got to be flags on the field. There's too many people out on the field. Too many men on the field. That'll be a first down. Boy, that's just going to kill you. Granted, there was some indecision by Kansas State whether they were going to try a long field goal or punt it, but the punt return team, Matt Brown's not going to be happy about because they never got on the field. The defense never got off, and their flags. Well, you know, Brett, Mac Brown's going to be unhappy, but he should be unhappy with his staff in this instance. I mean, they had the long field to come across. Kansas State had the short sideline, so they waited and waited and then hurried their team on. When Texas tried to match up, they had a longer run. Mm -hmm. The wise move for the Texas staff in that, in that point would have been to just keep their defense out there. And once the decision was made by Kansas State and Bill Schneider, they hustled out there, and yes, they were they at the did. line of scrimmage and set. So they did a great job Bill in Snyder's, getting their special team out there. Bill Snyder stole a first down. I agree. Illegal substitution on the receiving team. Five yards from the previous spot. First down. There it is. You're going to see on the top of your screen here. There they come in. Guys are still running in. But on the far right of the screen, just outside, guys hadn't got off the field. That was the problem. They had too many men. An illegal substitution. Kansas State kind of quick kicks it there. That's all first they had down to do. Kansas for first State, down. 49 yard line. So a first down inside the Texas 49 now. The drive stays alive on, as Gary said, a stolen first down. Hickson trying to bounce out of the pile again. This time he won't. Tony Holmes from the secondary holding on on top. Short gain, second down and nine coming up. Just over three minutes left first quarter. Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, our ABC crew with you from Manhattan, Kansas. A packed house, about 42,000. They're going to add several thousand seats to the stadium on the far side and put in more sky boxes. They'll be up over 50,000 next year, and uh, every ticket sold, and everybody in purple. They love this team. This is a happening in this part of the state on a Saturday afternoon. Here's the slant complete, close to a first down to Gavin Paris. Marcus Wilkins made the tackle. Looks like he's a little bit short of the first down. He was tackled by number 45, Marcus Wilkins. Coming up next Saturday on ABC Sports, a college football doubleheader in game one, except on the West Coast. You'll see Michigan State against Michigan or Wake Forest and Clemson. Then stay tuned at 3.30 Eastern. USC takes on Florida State. And we'll be in Nebraska for the Cornhuskers and the Huskies. Check the local listing for the game in your area or what you might be able to get on pay-per-view. Here's Michael Bishop on the run. First down and a bunch more down the sideline. Run out of bounds. At about the 24-yard line by Dusty Renfro, but he got 15, and he's still John with the Texas sideline. Man, man. We talk about a dimension of a quarterback. He's faster than Cade McNown. This is the fifth rush of the game. They've all been designed. Dusty Renfro is just now coming into your screen right there. He's spying the quarterback, but he needs a, I don't know, a gun Binoculars. or something. Yeah, he needs... <laughs> He can spy all he wants. This guy just outruns him. 39 yards already. <laughs> Bishop, as we showed you earlier, at 556 yards rushing and nine touchdowns last year. There's the first down story. Oof, that's pretty bleak again for Texas. And they've kept the ball out of Ricky Williams' hand because of that. Have they ever? Kansas State has made no mistakes with the exception of David Allen's fumble. Bishop trying to throw that one and swatted down. Nice job defensively by Cedric Woodard, who got a big hand in the way. Pass was batted down by number 50, Cedric Woodard. Second down, 10. That's what Texas needs is line. some good play out of their defensive line other than Humphrey. Yes, you're exactly right, and that was a good play up front. But, you know, it, it's fun to watch the maturation of a young quarterback. Uh, Michael Bishop 
They said last year when he was so, so good last year, an 11-1 record, he was playing at about a 5 on a 10 scale. Mm -hmm. Now they said he's at a 7.5. They hope by the end of the year he'll be up about a 9. I want to do one of those 9. That's goals. right. Here's a quick slam. McDonald caught it twice. Still going first and goal. You talk about staying with the pass. Watch McDonald on this one. Here he is out here. He's going to come inside a little slant pass. And you know what you like about the quarterback right here? The quarterback's coming in. I mean, the receiver's coming in on a slant. The quarterback who has a huge arm, you don't want to throw a bullet. You want to kind of ease it in there. I tell young quarterbacks, when the receiver is running at you, throw him a sponge. When he's running away from you, throw him a rock. <laughs> You know what I mean? They're a little that? different, aren't That's they? Exactly I right. like that. He threw him a sponge there. He just kind of engulfed it. He squeezed every ounce of water out of it. You can see in the red zone, they're nearly unstoppable. First and goal at the five. About the only thing that has stopped them this year has been penalty flags. 14 of them last week in their lopsided win. That was one thing Bill Snyder wasn't happy about. Delay a game will back them up to a first and goal at the 10 now. That's the only flaw they could find, really, in uh, their two victories. Their opener, they beat Indiana State 66 to nothing, and then 73 to 7 last week over Northern Illinois. But that was the black mark on uh, their yeah. performance, the 14 penalties. And, and Bill was really frank uh, with us, and he said with this team by telling them the, the first two games, there's no way they were going to lose. I mean, if they just go out there and play them as exhibition games and get ready for this game. Looks like they're ready for this game. First and goal of the 10. Here's some option. Trying to pitch it from Bull and covered by McCowan. He just flat took it away from Michael Bishop. That's being in the right place at the right time. The strong safety makes a big play. You know, we talked about the Kansas State staff stealing a first down. Well, here, Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator, stole one. Safety blitz by McCowan, number seven. The right call at the right time. That's why those coaches spend those 16-hour days there. <laughs> Coming from the corner right here, number seven. He's got the perfect call on at the right time. Bishop does not account for the strong safety. Surprise him, and they get their second turnover. That is a huge play by the Texas staff. So that stops another would-be scoring march by Kansas State. Let's see if Texas can capitalize. They didn't on Clinton Jammer's fumble recovery earlier. Now they work on their own 19-yard line. again. Big pile up. The umpire says Wildcats. Texas gave it right back to him. It happened so quick, you wonder how good the snap was this time. Jared Cooper is the guy. Nope, he's got it. He's got it clean. Puts the helmet. Jeff Kelly puts his helmet right on the ball. And Jared Cooper comes up with the fumble recover. Mark Simino also was right there, had it for a bit, and then Cooper ended up with it. Mac keeps writing on that yeah, pad. He's, he's going to have a to, dent in his pants. He's, need another, he's either going to need another pad or another big pad. All <laughs> two. Back in the pocket it goes. And back to the offensive line of scrimmage go the Wildcats at the 23-yard line. So they get it right back. Just under a minute. Left in the first quarter from the shotgun. They play fake it to Hickson, and Bishop goes on his own yeah, for about two. <laughs> Aaron well, Elfrey said, now wait a second. I played against Caden McNown last week, and coaches said, you're going to carry the ball more than Caden McNown. So I'm going to just stay at home and make sure that you're going over for Gatorade before I start running over for the ball. <laughs> it is a hot day. There'll be some of that consumed today. Among other things, they'll consume here in Manhattan. It's uh, supposed to be probably 87 degrees by halftime. Second down and eight. Here's the option off the play. Fake the pitch to Hickson, the trail man. Hickson got it down to the five-yard line. Cartwheeled there by Jammer. But he's got it first and goal, a pick, uh, pick up a 16. Well, they're not shy about running that option play. They ran it for a fumble to play before. This time they come back. Ron Hudson and Bill Snyder dialing up again from shotgun. Works all the way down to the five-yard line. How about Eric? Ten yards of pop so far. Of course, he had a 44-yard touchdown in there. Eight for 81 already. And, and 
after the first quarter. I mean, I don't know if I've seen much dominance. Well, I guess I have. 66 That's the end of the first quarter. <laughs> That's the end of one here, though. They'll move it down to the other end where it'll be first and goal at the five. We've played one quarter in fourth rank Kansas State leading Texas 7-0. This is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Start the second quarter, Kansas State 7-0. Time for our Aflac trivia question this week. Kansas State's athletic teams are nicknamed the Wildcats. What's the nickname of the town here? And they have helped put this town on the map with their football program. We'll give you the answer a little bit later on. First and goal at the five. Bishop hands off to Hickson. It's bounced around on the inside. Renfro is there again after a pickup of about two. Well, you know the Texas defense and Kyle Reese, their defensive coordinator right now, is going to try to dial up something and keep an eye on the quarterback, Bishop. I would assume Bishop will have this ball outside the pocket, running, look for some type of option or rollout, and let's see how the Texas defense tries to adjust to that. We've also seen Bishop on a quarterback draw several times already today. Second and goal at the three. Got one on one on the top also. Here he is on the option. Keeps it, goes down for a loss. Texas played it beautifully. They knew it was coming just like Gary did. Sure did, and, and you know what happened that time? They put their down linemen, their tackles. It was Cedric Wooded on an outside rush. Everybody took an outside gap that time. If Kansas State would have dialed inside, they would have been right. Everybody goes like this to the outside and says, if you're going to run outside, you're going to have trouble. Everybody goes outside, takes an outside gap, boom. There's the big play. Nice call by the defense. Only takes one guy to miss his block, and Woodard made it pay as he got by Brian Hanley. And now it's third and goal, back of the seventh. Bishop throwing a fade to the corner to McDonald. Penalty marker down, but it's going to be interference on Walker. This one will stand. Seven-yard scoring toss. See, I, I don't know. I, I just wonder why a defensive staff, I know you want to go bump and run, but why you put a guy out there all by himself, no help when you've got a mismatch out there. That, that's just tough, tough job for that corner. They're going to give him seven points. One-on-one, -on -one, Joe Walker against Darnell McDonald. McDonald 6-3. He's right there. Good coverage. Poor technique. Does not come and look for the ball. That's an easy throw. You can make anybody. You can get uh, 50 guys out of the stands and throw that one. The only thing I'm shocked at is that the officials took that long to talk about it. But at any rate, they finally do say touchdown. See, in that situation, I think a defensive, you got to play some in and out coverage and give those guys some help. Martin Gramatica in for the point after. And he's got it. It's 14 to nothing. So Kansas State has fumbled a couple of times today, but when they get an opportunity down in that red zone, they don't fumble very often. And Bishop throws to his favorite receiver. Kansas State 14, Texas nothing. Well, they say Bill Snyder controls just about everything at this university concerned with football and maybe more things, but... Mac Brown right there says, I, I don't know if I have control of anything gentlemen, over here right now. He came in. This team is not ready to play the style of defense that we would all like to do. He told me yesterday that in the second half against UCLA, we simplified it to three defenses. He said the kids responded, but we might be in for a tougher battle here today playing against this team. I think he's right. 14 to nothing. Kansas State. We've already seen Bishop today throw a scoring pass, and boy, he was just phenomenal. As Gary said earlier, maybe it was a coming out party in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl last year against Syracuse, but he was sensational both with his arm, with his feet on the ground. He was the MVP of that bowl game, and it was 35-18 to 18 when all the smoke had cleared. Boy, would they love to go back to the Fiesta Bowl this well. year. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, the ratings are going to be higher this year. <laughs> That's <I have> right. <laughs> and a lot of the Tostito Fiesta Bowl 
Uh, scouts are here. Yeah, the bowl reps are here. Bowl reps are here. I was talking to one of them. I was kind of kidding him, saying, you know, when uh, you called the travel agent and asked for tickets to make you didn't think you were going to Kansas, did you? <laughs> Here's a kick, and it's a deep one. Dramatic at this point, frankly, does not allow many kick returns. No, and, and see, I did a scouting job there. See, I knew I could talk right through that kickoff. Right. Because you didn't have to worry about the play. Touch me. Touch me. Little guy with a big leg. Had a 65-yard field goal last week. And he might get another long-range shot before this one's over. Well, another bowl coming. They're pretty certain of that, and they would love it to be going in again to the Fiesta Bowl as a top-ranked team and a chance for a national championship in the Bowl Championship Series this year that we'll have for you for those first four days of 99 right here on ABC. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson with you. 13-28 till halftime. Texas trailing by two touchdowns. Ricky Williams trying to cut back. And he cut right back into the middle where Damian McIntosh was waiting for him. Wow. They're fast. They're fast, but at the point of attack, I mean, Damian McIntosh made the play, but at the point of attack out here at the bottom of your screen, Travis Oaks and the guys just won't let the ball come around the corner. They just stop it. You know, if you just stay in your lanes and stay patient, the ball's coming back to you. Right now, the bigger yet slower Texas offensive line cannot get Ricky Williams outside this Kansas State defense. Ricky Williams, five yards on five carries. Second down a dozen. Williams in motion now, sets up as a receiver. Applewhite going to go deep on the left side. Should be pass interference, no? Yes, finally the flag flies in. Nice shot, Carter got tangled up back there with Kwame Cavill. Cavill looked like he had a step on the deep out over there, and the ball was pretty well thrown, and uh, he went down in a heap, pass looked, interference. Yeah, it looked like they entangled their legs that time. It'll be a 15-yard penalty. Left side of the screen there, you see the little entanglement. Obviously. Nice you work. That one. Yep. Entanglement. Entanglement. Got one of those Franklin things right here. I just <laughs> So that's a first down, and Texas will take those first downs any way they can get them. They only right. had one before that. Right. They're, you know, their, their first three possessions, 10 plays, 30 yards, one fumble. This is the second first down of the game. I don't think you can use half of your offense. You have to use the whole package against this Kansas State defense. Four wide receivers. Let's see if they're just trying to spread out the defense to give it to Ricky Williams. We'll find out. First down from the 33. That's the call that Kansas State didn't bite. Jeff Kelly. And Mark Simino there to meet him. How well coached is Kansas State? Texas tries to sneak on the four people, the four wideouts. Kansas State just keeps on two of their linebackers, Kelly and Simino, come out with a nickel passage and matches it perfectly. Disrupt, clean up, mop up. <laughs> That's right. All three of those linebackers on the Butkus watch list. Only Michigan, Notre Dame, and Florida are the other schools that can make that claim with their entire linebacking core mentioned. Applewhite rolls and throws, and he threw a strike. Close to a first down to Kwame Cavill. Good throw, rolling to his left and throwing back against his body, and that, uh, that one delivered right on the mark, pickup of nine. Nice call by Greg Davis here. He does not feel confident in his pass protection, kind of moves Applewhite out. Here Good footwork, lets it go, he gets a completion, and you know, you mentioned insurance. Kwame Cavill coming on. He really is. He's just getting better and better every week, and he, he has become the go-to guy in this offense as a receiver instead of winning the right. He's the guy. He's a big target, 6'2", over 200 pounds. Third down and a yard. This is where your All-American tailback's got to get you a first down. Boy, if he did, he barely got it. McIntosh, the first one there. Ricky Williams on the bottom of the pile has been unable to find any kind of room to run. They may have to measure this one, too. I'm not sure. I don't think he made that. Maybe not. The spot wasn't the greatest, I'll tell you that much. Penn State leading Pittsburgh. 
Long time battle. Washington right now in front of BYU. We'll see the Huskies against the Huskers next week. I think Washington's one of the surprise teams in college football this year also. Made a nice adjustment with their offense to put it in the left-hander's hands yes. and let him do a little more, and it's paying off so far. Oof, that one's close. That's it. That's Got good it. enough. Yep. Ricky says, I like making first downs, but those third and inches <laughs> and gaining <laughs> four inches is no fun. That's not even the nose of the football. That's no. some other smaller body part. It's a, it's yeah, it's something on the, on the end there. Ricky Williams moving into some unbelievable company in the all-time rushing list. Of course, he's got Tony Dorr setting his sights, but he's going to pass several of those guys before this day's over if the Kansas State defense will let him. From the shotgun, first down. Texas from its own 43. They give it to Williams. Trying to step on one man. He got away. Finally got a little bit of room to work, and he did it all on his own. Jeff Kelly made the tackle. That stiff arm is one of Ricky's best moves. And even though they were holding on to his jersey for dear life, he made a positive gain out of it. Ricky Williams has made a career out of getting yardage after the initial hit. Right. I think he's going to have to rely on that today because uh, not a lot of clean runs against this defense that is just so much coming at every angle. What do you call those, yaks? Yard yaks. after Yard contact. Yard after contact, yeah. yaks. We'll keep an eye on the yaks today. From midfield, second down and three. Applewhite lofts one out. Dangerous pass. Nunez tipped it. Picked off by Cooper. Nunez maybe would have been better off to give up on that one. Well, that's impossible to do. You're right from hindsight, but when you're going after it, you don't know what's going on. This was one of the ones that. You know, maybe a little smallish of a quarterback. Applewhite lays the ball up. Nunez tries all effort he could to get it. And Jerry Cooper came up with a nice. You know what? They're going to say oh, no yeah. interception. He caught that ball. I think he did, too. They just waved it off. And you're going to hear the reaction of he the Wildcat fans. Here's another look. This was a, this was an easy catch. Right here, this was an easy call. Well, there wasn't any doubt in my mind when Here I saw is. Here's it the, the first angle. time. Here's the angle. Look at that. He had it. That ball never touched the ground. Well, Texas maybe got a break there. Jared Cooper, who thought he had an interception, has to step back into the defensive huddle. Third down, meanwhile. And a long three. Seventh play of the Longhorn Drive. Just over 10 minutes left first half. 14 to nothing, Kansas State. The four wide out grouping again. Applewhite in the shotgun. Here comes the blitz. Applewhite hit as he throws. That one was almost intercepted. Darren Howard came storming in there after Applewhite. And it's fourth down. Darren Howard was rated by the Sporting News football as the fifth best defensive end in college football. I can see why. He's playing like it today. He really isn't he? is. I mean, Octavius Bishop is really not, you know, Howard could be out here without pads on right now. No one's touched him. <laughs> Chris Stockton to kick and David Stockton. Allen back. State, Allen's had a couple of nifty Allen. returns already today. The all time yardage punt return leader in Kansas State history. Two scores already of plus 60 yards on the season. Let's see if he can get his hands on this one. Stockton again got great hang time on it. Allen from the eight. He made the first two miss. The third one missed. He might be on his way. Broke a tackle. David Allen fully. David Allen is gone. Watch him run. The throw of the year. Touchdown. Shifty enough right here for <laughs> even had time to adjust his face mask on this one. Falls right into line with other Kansas State great returners like Chris Canny, Andre Coleman, Mitch Running. That's unbelievable. And how about Verl Schweitzer, who we talked to oh, last yeah, night? Verl. A little uh, 
soiree we went to. He had three <laughs> punt return touchdowns in his career, and I said, you got a record that's about to fall, girl. And he says, I wouldn't want it to go to anybody better than number 32. Allen for the touchdown has made up for his fumble, hasn't he? 93 yards, it's 21 to nothing, Kansas State. The second longest punt return in Kansas State history is giving the Wildcats a 21 to nothing lead now. And that guy's name all alone in the record books as a punt returner. David Allen just went 93 yards and dramatic and out of kick. Not just Mitchell and Ryan Nunez back. I know Bill Snyder's a good coach, but you can't coach that. You can only recruit that. Oh, I guess. This will probably not be returnable. <laughs> that one's about 20 yards out of the end zone. Well, earlier, we asked you the AFLAC trivia question. Kansas State athletic teams, as you know, are nicknamed the Wildcats. And what's the name of the town that they play in? If you've never been out here, maybe you wouldn't know. It's, there you go, yeah. the Little Apple. <laughs> Manhattan, as Gary said, when the bowl people were making their plans to Manhattan, First they might have thought of Broadway or New York, out. not Manhattan, Kansas. But uh, this town and this area, you talk about an area that gets fired up for a football Saturday. Wow. They were pumped up yesterday, weren't they? Were they ever. First down, Texas. Down three touchdowns. It's a spot they are getting all too familiar with. The toss to Ricky Williams. Might have gotten two yards, but Travis Oaks didn't let him go. Well, this defense is geared around Travis. letting Oates and Kelly and Simino yeah. make the tackles, and they don't disappoint anybody. No, they do they? don't. You know, Jeff Second Kelly, nine, I, I wonder if he might be quicker than Ricky Williams. I mean, he, he lines up about five yards deep as middle linebacker. When Ricky goes one way, he goes that way, too. He is quick. Keep your eyes at number eight. He'll lead you a lot of action. Look at that total yardage. Only 47 yards for Texas. Play action for Applewhite. Long ball for McGarity to make the catch. Yes, he did. Ooh. Wayne McGarity held on. Pick up a 32 yards. I think the Kansas State defense and Mike Stoops is willing to give teams the opportunity to do this because they commit a lot of guys to the run. This is what Texas has to do. They have to say, I don't care if we're playing with a freshman in high school. We have to throw the ball downfield. If we just, we're going to embarrass ourselves, we keep trying to throw the ball short. You have to spread this defense out, not just horizontally, but vertically as well. Major Applewhite's done a fine job at quarterback so far today. As you said earlier, he has not been the problem. He's 6 of 11 right now. He's back to throw his 12th pass of the day. And he threw that one on a rope to Derrick Lewis. First down, pick up of a dozen. Now, this guy can play. Major Applewhite can play. Does not really matter how tall you are if you're a quarterback. You've got to be a playmaker, and this guy is a playmaker, understands the game, see well enough, throws through the lanes, and gets it there. The seniors on Texas team, when well, they saw this young guy come in on his recruiting <laughs> trip, thought it was a frat party guy that uh, took a yeah. wrong turn. They said he can't be a football player. Yeah, quit hanging around here, man. Yeah, it's for football players. He's hanging in the pocket today at the 34. Ricky Williams found a little opening and closed in a hurry, but he got almost five. Lamar Chapman from the secondary, along with Mark Simino, made the tackle. 20 yards for Ricky Williams, but it's come on 10 carries. Yeah, we, you know, you, we talk about trying to stay with Ricky, trying to carry the ball at least 30 times. It's a little tough now. It's 21-0. Texas has to just say one drive at a time. Made a lot of practice of that last week. That's for sure. Second down and five. Ricky Brown in motion. Half 
Hawaii throws. I'm not quite sure who that was intended for. It was a crossing pass to Nunez, or if it was a deep slant in on the outside. I really don't know. Gerald Deesman is going to get called for holding downfield this time, outside wide. Going to be on. It's going to be a penalty. There it is. There's the hold outside at the corner. A lot of grabbing being done outside by those corners. Top of the screen, wide receiver out there on the numbers. Watch, try to get inside. No, no, no. We got the big hand on the jersey. I think the ball was thrown inside to Newman, but got the holding outside. They'll take the penalty in the first down. It's the second time they've gotten a first down by penalty. Well, they're, they're so aggressive. Kansas State is so aggressive offensively in their play calling and defensively in their play calling that, that you're just going to get some penalties. I mean, it's just going to happen. Iowa State fresh off their big one over Iowa, putting it on today as well. Another victory, it appears. Indiana surprising Kentucky. Deepest penetration of the day for the Longhorns. Just inside the Kansas State 20 yard line. First down. Applewhite, look out! Intercepted. Picked off by Devane Robinson. Ooh. Oh, that one hurts way up here. There is never a protection when an outside linebacker is not accounted for. This is either on the quarterback not reading his hot properly or on the tight end or the tackle not blocking it properly. No matter what, somebody made a mental mistake. There's a tor turnaround right there, a big turnover to a defensive tackle who That's drops in one of those zone blitz blitzes. Thing. Yep. yep. Wow. So Devane Robinson's a happy guy, and Oaks got a major hit on the Texas quarterback. Another turnover. Goes back to the Wildcats offense from the 20. Picks it. Blasts through the left side. Dusty Renfro, Woodard, Hampton, they're all over there to make the stop. Tackle by number 46. Well, just every time Texas gets something going, they turn around and give it back to Kansas State. Yeah, and they, they just don't have the the athletes to match up with this catch with this K State offense. Sooner or later, you keep giving them the ball like this, they're just going to keep popping big plays. Mm -hmm. Bishop has been quiet again. Let's, let's look for him to get involved by throwing the ball deep. He's downwind now, and he can throw it 93 yards. That's what they say. It. Hickson. And Hickson's got a first down. Aaron Babineau made the tackle, but Eric Hickson out to about the 33-yard line. Your exclusive home for primetime NFL. Sunday night at 8.15 Eastern, it's ESPN. The Eagles and the Arizona Cardinals. Irving Fryer and company against Jake Plummer and the gang. And then on Monday night on ABC Sports, Monday Night Football, live at its new time, 8 Eastern. Emmett Smith and the Dallas Cowboys take on the New York Football Giants. Sunday night and Monday night here on ABC. Sunday night on ESPN. 6-15 remaining in the half. 21 to nothing. Fourth-ranked Kansas State looking all of that fourth-ranking. Bishop wanted to go long as Gary was talking about a moment ago and now takes off on his own. Got the corner in the first down. Took a pretty good size shot on the sideline from DeAndre Lewis. But you got a running quarterback that's a threat to go all the way. You got to hit the guy. 17 yard pickup. You got to have coordination on defense. One time this Texas defense has poor coverage, they get burned. The next time they finally cover someone and they lose containment on Michael Bishop. It's tough to play defense because 11 guys have to be working together or you're going to have a breakdown. You said he'd do something on this series long. You didn't know it would be a 17-yard run. That's right. <laughs> right at midfield. 6.01 left. There's his rushing total already today. Drops back and throws a slant. Tips by the linebacker, Dusty Renfro. I think got a hand on it, and it's incomplete. You know when the quarterback for the opposition has more yards rushing than Ricky Williams, things aren't going well. Yeah, and that, that'll get around, too, believe me. Ricky Williams made the statement going into this game that his teammates were going to have to help him if he was ever going to have a chance for the Heisman. He said, we have to win nearly all of the rest of our games, plus have a good game here against K-State. So far, looks on, 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 ominous. This guy looks like the Heisman candidate, and he will be, I'm sure, considered, but you kind of wonder if well, the kind of numbers you would need 
But I tell you what, you talk about leading the club and being an MVP type of guy. He sure fits the bill. This one's incomplete as well. They're looking for a flag and do not get one. Chris Butcher was there with Darnell McDonald. Interesting to watch this uh, Kansas State team at such high expectations this year. And Will Snyder was a little concerned that those expectations would turn into to distractions. Michael Bishop said, <laughs> distractions? This program was built on distractions. That's right. We can handle it. Five straight bowl games this club, or these Kansas State teams, I should say, have gone to. 41-game winning streak against non-ranked opponents at home, and that includes now Texas non-ranked today. And it's going to bring up putting situation. So three passes in a row that weren't the greatest. There is a flag down now, though, in the Kansas State backfield. And they're going to call intentional grounding, I think, on How Bishop. How can you throw, call intentional grounding on that? He threw a bad ball. There's a referee that didn't play much football in his career. If he did, he was a down lineman. <laughs> Holy cow, you can't throw them all perfect. They've had a lot of committee meetings today for some relatively easy calls, I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. This is their third one or fourth one. Michael Bishop should also show him his ring finger that he hurt in, in la a couple weeks ago, and he has a little bit of a knuckle problem. In some of those throws to get away from that's a horrible call horrible call intentional grounding on the offense five yards will start it all awesome down it doesn't make much difference they're gonna punt either way yeah, it, it, but you're it does, right but it's it's just the principle of the thing I hear you it's a design dash play getting Michael Bishop out watch he's gonna try to throw the comeback to the outside the ball just sails on him Hasn't he ever seen a bad throw before? The ball was attended for Darnell McDonald. That's a horrible call. James Garcia hustles out for his second punt of the day. Hodges Mitchell waiting on it for Texas. Garcia, nice kick to Mitchell from the five. Hodges Mitchell trying to get in the act like David Allen and has a pretty nice return out to the 16-yard line, a 12-yard return. Michael Bishop pleading his case to no avail. His team goes up by 21. The Wildcats lead Texas with 534 left in the first half as Bill Schneider brings his offensive troops around him on the sideline. And Texas has been unable to get anything going offensively, including their All-American tailback. Ricky Williams held in check so far. First down for the Longhorns. Cavill in motion. Ricky Williams again hit immediately in the backfield. Rowe is there, so Simino. They are just so rangy. Everybody wearing purple on that defense. You know, Texas is losing by 21 points, but uh, they're, the, they're the second best team on the field right now. <laughs> this officiating crew. They're struggling a little they're bit. They're in last right now, they're sorry last. to say. They're in last out of the three teams. <laughs> now we'll hear about that, but. Well, everybody's got to take criticism. Five minutes left of the half. Check for us. All right, second down and 12. Applewhite. And he goes 17 yards for the score. Applewhite got pressure from Damian McIntosh, number 77. Just as he threw the ball, he got hit, was not even really able to follow through, and probably threw the ball not where he was attempting to throw it. It kind of came off his hand. That's the second interception he's had because of the rush inside forcing a bad throw. They can beat you with defensive touchdowns, special team scores, and on offense. They've done it every way so far today. Grammatica's extra point is up and good. And it is starting to be shades of last week against UCLA for the Texas Longhorns. They are down 28 to nothing. Well, you have to admit, Kansas State is, is not just competing now against Texas. They're competing against UCLA and Whoever's in the top, part of the, polls, in the top yep. part of the polls. Especially UCLA, though. They can stand out there and say it was 35-3 to a week ago. And we got lazy. Whatever. And, and then UCLA got lazy. Texas showed their pride and came back and played hard. But right now, K-State is saying we can match that. 
Purdue apparently didn't have much trouble with Dante Culpepper today. Louisville pasting Illinois. And that's a final. You see some of the other scores from across the country. The wind's not slowing down, and neither is the Kansas State team. They have scored on a 93-yard punt return, an interception return for a score, and then the running of Hickson and the passing of Bishop. There's really not a lot of option for Mac Brown at quarterback either. Nope. You know, after Major Applewhite, it's Adam Dunn is listed number two. He's a true freshman, has never even had a snap. Probably didn't even have much practice time until this week. Defense number three, I don't think there'll be very much drama from Dramatica here. He'll probably kick this one out of the stadium again. And he does. He almost hit our guy with the parabolic mic down there at the base of the goal post. Well, we've got a quick break here. Let's check in with John Saunders in our New York studios. John. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 98, all the day's scores and highlights, three of the top five teams in action, including number one, Ohio State. John, it's a very strong year for college quarterbacks this year, several with key tests today. All right, it's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 98. All right, guys, here it's 28 to nothing. Kansas State, just under five minutes left, second quarter. With Gary Danielson, I'm Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along with us here at Wagner Field, KSU Stadium. Manhattan, Kansas. First down, Texas from its own 20. Ricky Williams, there's nowhere to hide for number 34 today. Travis Oaks with the tackle. Well, one more look at the touchdown. Sorry, Mr. and Mrs. Applewhite, but uh, it's kind of our job. Here comes the rush inside. There you can see what happens with the pass rush and the coordination of smart linebackers threw it right between the top part of the circle on the eight and the bottom part of the circle on the eight. Did he never see him at all, you think? I, I, I think he was trying to throw it around him, trying to fit it around him, got hit just as he let it go, and ended up going off target. Four wideouts on the shotgun. Play fake, and they throw on the run, and it's Bobby Cavill. And it looks like he's going to have a first down. Let's check in in New York with John Saunders again. Brad, apparently Missouri for the second straight year is not impressed by the number one team in the nation. This time Ohio State, Joe Germain scrambles out of the pocket, takes it towards the sideline, gets popped there, it comes loose, and right into the hands of Carl Posey. He scoops it up, takes it the distance for the touchdown, and Missouri has taken the lead on the Buckeyes. Ohio State, though, is threatening. Under four minutes in the half. Texas with a first down. They'd like to get something on the board before intermission. Applewhite, plenty of time this time. Throws incomplete. Receiver fell down that time. That was Jamel Thompson who lost his footing. Pass was intended for number 12, Jamel Thompson, incomplete. Just as we talked about the coordination of the defense for Texas, the coordination for the offense. Finally, the offensive line gets a stop, holds off the pass rush, and you have a receiver stumble out wide. Everything seems to be a step behind, and that's what that attacking defense can do to you. You know, you got guys coming at you from every angle. You have to do something a little quicker than you want to, and problems happen. Second and 10 from the 31. Possible blitz from Kansas State. Kelly's thinking about it. He backs out of it. Applewhite's in trouble anyway. On the sideline, incomplete. Cavill, the intended receiver. The closer guy was Gerald Niesman. Was Brad, that was that zone blitz again that K-State ran. Devane the Robinson lined up as a defensive tackle. As you see McIntosh limp off. Devane Robinson lined up as a defensive tackle, then bailed out as a middle linebacker. He got a pick by doing that earlier. We haven't said much on the positive side for Ricky Williams, have we, today? Nope. He's been shut down completely. And timeout taken by Kansas State. 3.45 left here in the first half. It's all fourth-ranked Kansas State right now, leading by 28.
Kansas State 28 to nothing over Texas and the Longhorns with a third and 10 coming up here. Third down, 10, 31 yard line. Four wide receivers for Major Applewhite. Kansas State brings the delayed blitz. Applewhite delivers it, but I don't think it's going to be enough for a first down at the 40 yard line. Pass the pass nine. complete three times last week against UCLA. Texas had completions on third down and came up a yard short of the first down marker. It just happened to him again. You know, and that is not really just the fault of the play design right there. What it is is third and long. I mean, you're, you're inviting a blitz in that situation. Defensive coordinators know that you have to throw hot. And what happens is if you come up and make a sure tackle, which Kansas State does, tackles very well. You're not going to pick up first downs. Hold your breath, folks. Yeah. David Allen's back in punt return formation. He's docked into kick. Oh, this one off the side of his foot. Yeah, that's I don't a good think one. Allen will have a chance at this one. That's a good one. And bounces out of bounds at the 31. You're probably right. Didn't give any chance for a return. Only a 29-yard kick, however. And now Kansas State's got plenty of time to work with. It's only a 29-yard kick, but it's 69, 61 yards better than the last time. <laughs> That's true. The last one was in the end zone. <laughs> 69 yards closer. 255 oh, remaining in the half. And there's the offensive unit with Michael Bishop, number seven, in the middle, set to take the field. And they have one timeout remaining to work with, if need be. Now you're thinking Gramatica. Yes, you are. I mean, if you can get it to the 40-yard line, you have a shot at it. You get him to midfield, you got a shot yeah, at it. Yeah, you do. You got the wind at his back. And the give on the handoff to Hickson. He might get him in Gramatica range right here on this run. First down. <laughs> picked up about 12. Eric, talk about shifty. I think he fits that category, too. Quick feed in the hole, and he's had a nice first half as he's got over 100 yards. Well, he, there's Gramatica getting ready. He's got his nuclear shoes on right there. <laughs> you really can't get too close to that foot. It's, you know, you get just... Yep, it's like kryptonite, yeah, sort of. it's really it's scary. <laughs> first down at the 43. Hickson over 100 yards on the ground in the first half, so we knew a tailback would have a big first half. We maybe thought it would be Ricky Williams, not Eric Hickson. Bishop throws complete McDonald does a little dance around at the 45 and he's got a first down a pickup of about 13 he almost stepped out at the 47 yard line and then he cut back in and got extra yardage this was an audible by Bishop jam coverage stay with the route they call it a lock out instead of running the fade the receiver stays with this pattern even though it's bump and run coverage Joe Walker not very good at bump and run coverage well, this would be a chip shot for Gramatica if they made no more yardage here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's, he's smiling. He says, Coach, this one's too short. Yeah, back up. Back up. Take a penalty. Do something. And now the officials are going to say timeout Kansas State. Well, we talked about Martin Gramatica. And in dramatic fashion a week ago, this was the final play of the first half. 65-yard field goal. Good. And he had about four yards to spare as you get another look at it. Maybe more than four. And Gramatica pretty excited. Mobbed by his teammates. The longest field goal in NCAA history without a tee. He got mobbed so bad, somebody hit him with a helmet in the nose and cut a bridge of his nose open. But that football that he slept with that night, the coaches say, he doesn't get to keep it because the NCAA says that at the end of the year, Kansas State can make a trophy for him at the end of his career and give it to him that way, or Martin can send $40 to the Kansas Come State on. Athletic Department to keep the football. Come on. Are you, can you believe that? Oh, well. <laughs> hey, those are rules, right? That's page 3,417 of the NCAA rule book. At any rate, uh, he was one happy kicker last week, and he is a threat. He was a Lou Groza Award winner last year. He only missed one field goal during the regular season. He had a bad Fiesta Bowl. He missed two there and promised to make up for it. Canceled his summer vacation to Mexico to work out on his leg, and it has paid off so far this season. Well, Bill Snyder kind of was, there we go. It's about how I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with me, partner. <laughs> we got a long way to go. At the 44, first down. 2.18 left, quite a bit left in this half. 
They fake the toss and come back to the slant to McDonald. He reels and the defensive back and heads to the sideline out of bounds at the 24-yard line. This McDonald kid's not too bad either. Well, he's come out. It, it, his coming out party was the Fiesta Bowl. You could see the confidence. Last two games, outscored in the first half, 63 to three. And you know, the number 66 is kind of a scary number. Yes, Six, it is. 63 points is a scary number too, because uh, the last two games, Kansas State has won both of them by a margin of 66 points. It's a and magic I'm, number that Texas would just as soon put in a closet somewhere and never have to hear again. Hickson on the counter. Whoa. Nice hit he put on Quentin Jammer and face, a penalty marker. Face mask. Five more years to be tacked on there. Quinn Jammer says, if I got to make this many tackles, I should be allowed to tackle anything I can get my hands on. That's right. Not a good sign when your free safety probably is leading the team in tackles here and going in the first half. These folks have been waiting since the beginning of the season to watch their team play a respectable opponent and feel they've been slighted a little bit in the Sagarin ratings. They're ranked 20th, the national polls leapfrogged by one of the polls by UCLA this past week and now they're trying to put 35 on the board against Texas in the first half which would be a field goal better as far as margin than yes. UCLA did last week when it was 35 to 3 at halftime so and, then, and now Texas is going to some self-doubt is going to start to creep in this Texas team because last week they came back against UCLA and everybody said all right Texas really found themselves in the second half but it may be that UCLA just said hey this game's over they lost their focus and, and took it easy on this Texas defense. So that's the way the game goes. First and goal after the Hicks and run. He'll get the call again, straight up the middle. And Eric got it down okay, inside the three. There's ESPN USA Today. Coaches poll, Ohio State number one, Florida playing Tennessee tonight, Nebraska, who we'll see next week, Kansas State, and UCLA number five. Well, you know, after today, you know, if Missouri, for you know, the Big 12 people are watching that one very closely, can hold on, and then Florida's got a tough one against Tennessee, yeah. that old Nebraska again could end up being number one. Could be another shake-up day, that's for sure. And now everybody jumped as Bishop takes it into the corner of the end zone. It's a matter of who down there in the the pit jump first was it somebody in purple or somebody in white Sean Rogers is the guy that kind of reacted and hit it into Randall Cummings that time the center for Kansas State probably have a conference on this here <laughs> dead ball prior to the snap we have defense offside by contact half the distance to the goal repeat first down you are correct sir that's exactly what happened they got one don't forget Valvoline halftime, 98. John and Todd are waiting in about a minute and a half to bring you all the scores and highlights from the other games across the country. Second and goal just outside the one. Eric Hickson, not quite. It'll be third and goal from about a foot away. Anthony Hicks made the tackle on Hickson. Let's see where they spot it. Not just inside the one. I get the feeling that both teams would like to score on the last play of the half. Just to get to the locker room. Right. I don't know if... <laughs> I don't know if Texas wants the ball back that bad either. Goolsby will be the fullback. Eric Hickson already has one touchdown today, a long range one of 44 yards. He's done some of the damage to get him down close on third and goal. Texas almost jumped. Bishop keeps it and scores. Touchdown, Bishop. From a yard out. One yard on the play for Michael Bishop. That's his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Milford Stevenson this time. The left tackle comes down real hard on Sean Rogers. K-State had been running right up in the middle, and this time the left tackle just slammed down, and Bishop with those quick feet ran the sneak wide. Worked perfectly. Gramatica in for the point after to try to make it 35 to nothing, and he does. You know, he kicks him so hard on those extra points, you got to have plexiglass up there. That's right. That's, right. That's, right. That's why they put that new building down there in the end zone. <laughs> he puts them right up there in the windows. <laughs> Get those tinted windows from uh, the hockey arenas here. So Mac Brown for the second week in a row sees a high-powered opponent 
have his team buried at intermission. Now the question, as Gary said, will be, will they show the kind of character and the non-quit attitude that they had last week against UCLA, or will Kansas State just keep right on rolling? Well, you know, what's funny, and this has always been one of my pet peeves as a player, is I, I, sometimes you tell the coach, he goes, I don't want you to quit, I want you to compete, keep playing hard, and you go to the coach, coach, I'm already playing hard. I'm These playing guys as hard are, as I can. They're, they're better than we are, yeah. <laughs> you know. They're faster, they're bigger, and I can try as hard as I want. The guy's going to run right by me. You do some of the reading, and you hear that some of the coaches say that tackling is 90% determination and 10% technique. And I say, Coach, I'm real determined. I just ain't getting close enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm real determined I'm not getting close enough to use my technique, Coach. Grammatic good a kick. And those two guys back at the goal line might as well take a knee now, probably. Yeah. The guys in the, in the, on the hill have a better chance of getting this one. Here it goes. With the kryptonite shoe, it's out of the back of the end zone again. It's a one-hopper into the crowd this time. His fifth kickoff, fourth touchback. A last week in the first half against UCLA, Texas with just three points. They were encouraged by the fact that they actually won the second half, if you want to put it that way. But you can see there was a dramatic difference in how they played the final two quarters last week against the Bruins. But that's yet to be determined if they can get done against a Kansas State defense that I think, quite frankly, is quite a bit better yeah. than UCLA's yeah, is. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. This is the one of the top defenses, and I don't think they're quite as good. Kansas State is not as good as UCLA's receivers. Right. I think they match up pretty close at quarterback, and I think this Kansas State offensive line is probably an even, but defensively, this is a better defense. Kansas going to play a little bit safe. Ricky Williams, there's just nowhere to run yeah. for him today. Kelly made first contact. Jeff Kelly all over the place. Darren Howard helped him out, a pickup of a yard. And Ricky Williams has 13 carries for 19 yards. And on the day of those rushes, six times he's been held to no gain or negative yardage to pick up those statistics. Well, you know, I said he had to carry the ball 30 times. And if you give the tailback the ball 30 times today, Ricky's going to be in trouble. Ricky might have, he might have 80 <laughs> yards on 30 carries before the day's over. Yeah, you can't keep running the tailback when you're behind 35 to nothing. Final play of the half. Williams got about two or three to bring the half to a close. Dominant Kansas State Wildcat squad right now. Texas in a huge hole again that they have become all too accustomed with. Michael Bishop and his troops out in front, 35 to nothing. Passing yardage, but uh, that really didn't matter at this point. 17 to 7 in first downs. And the starting field position, it's always been a problem when you play Kansas State because of their kicker. Coming in, the average starting position for opponents was a 21-yard line, and Texas is right about on that today. Third down and four. Applewhite waits till the last moment, trying to go to McGarity, incomplete. In and out of his hands as Dyshad Carter was there to help bump it.